I'm in the Chaka's Winery Tasting Room. It's a very special day today because I get to try four experimental wines. These are not available to buy anywhere. They're just for me, but I'll share them with you. So I'm here with the Chaka's brothers, the enologist Orestes Chaka's and the viticulturalist Hector Chaka's. So, Orestes, what are we trying today? We're going to give you a um, tasting of uh, some of our wines that uh, they're under the label of Epilogy. Uh, Epilogy basically it's uh, a new range of uh, labels we're going to release in the market that we have been releasing actually the past uh, year uh, and it's uh, experimental wines or wines that basically we've chosen for the consumer to try. First of all it's uh, we're going to try the Xenisteri 2014 and see how Xenisteri if it has the possibility to age uh, as a wine. Basically a very special Xenisteri for us because it was very multi-awarded, it got three gold awards, it got a regional trophy in the Canter World Wine uh, competition okay. uh, in 2015. Basically only 100 wines out of 17,000 that uh, competed in that competition got this award. And, uh, 100 out of 17,000? Yes. Wow! We have a few bottles left so we decided to uh, share one with you just uh, to just to see how Xenisteri basically ages uh, in time and if it has its potential. So even though this is a white wine, you believe it can age for how yes. long? Uh, well, we're still trying to find out, but in my experience I would say at least uh, uh, six years and even more than that. How many of these uh, do you have left? Uh, I think around eight. Eight ten, bottles yes. left. I'm very honoured, thank you very much for sharing it with me. <laughs> So uh, basically, what you can see here, it's uh, there is this um, like petrol hint uh, into the Xenisteri, uh, which is very reminiscent to a Semillon or a Riesling that oh, ages. Riesling. Yes. Um, then you get this like quinces, like uh, more mature fruit, like yellow ripe, fruit. and there is like this beeswax, and for me there is also like this smoke coming out of it. It's true, I've never tasted Xenisteri quite like this before. The acidity has basically mm -hmm. blended within. The Xenisteri is not as sharp as what you would expect from a, no. from a young from a, Xenisteri. From a young Xenisteri, yes. Very, and fuller body as well. Yeah. I have never had Xenisteri quite so layered and complex. Delectable, I believe is the word I'm looking for. Absolutely gorgeous. Oh. Yes, let's move on to Pramara. So this is this is a variety that's uh, indigenous to Cyprus. Not many people know Pramara. It's a variety that a lot of the winemakers, they believe that it doesn't make good wine. So we decided to give it a try ourselves. And I think we got a good expression of Pramara. And uh, although we, uh, we've we only had three years of its uh, production, uh, it's the third year actually now, we decided to uh, have a small go on barrel aging, bar barrel fermenting in it actually. This okay. is uh, from the, directly from the barrel, just uh, to taste. So, Hector, is Promara difficult to grow? Uh, not actually, it's uh, not very difficult for Promara to grow. We have uh, Yanud, it's much more difficult than Vambagada, but uh, Promara uh, oh, nice. gives us a good yield and uh, yeah, it's. Uh, okay. So what are the difficulties then in the vinification? Okay, process? the so problem the is that it doesn't give you a lot of um, an, an intense aromatic profile and uh, we, with the other analogist here, we decided to leave it with the skins for an extended uh, uh, ah. maceration for four days before uh, starting the fermentation in order to ex extract as much as possible from the phenolics and from the aromatic compounds from the skin. And this is very lemony, but lemon zest? Yes, uh, also uh, a fine old of melon to it. Uh. Kiwi? <laughs> Kiwi! And that's why you get this bitterness. This is from the maceration. But it's a pleasant bitterness. Yes, it it's is. It's actually, yes. I can see how this would go really, really well with food. Yes, you need like something that is uh, has more uh, body as a food, let's say, like um, maybe. Uh, Sipas, uh, yes, exactly. Something that can stand up to it. This has a lot of character, and I think uh, the way you treated it clearly has uh, paid off. How long are you planning to leave it in the barrel? <laughs> we don't really know. Uh, best machine in 
each winery in the mouth and the, mouth. the, the, and the nose. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, following this, we're going to Mavro Muklos. Muklos, it's basically the area where this vineyard is found. It's actually a, a really old wine, so almost 100 years old. Really? Somewhere around there. Yeah. Oh, wow. Vineyard, I'm sorry. Okay, okay so the, uh, the age of the vineyard, has this had an impact on, on the yield? Uh, much lower yield. Uh, you can see the color. It's. I give it to a lot of people to taste in there. Like a, what's like a dark rosé. I had it for more than a month with the skins. Okay. And it doesn't get any color. Mavro is Greek for for black, so you'd yeah. expect a really dark wine, but maybe the reason it's it's because the the berry it's, it is really uh, black color. This is the m most. Uh, misunderstood variety in the whole of Cyprus. Everyone thinks that when you're making a, a red wine, it has to be like a big, bold red wine. For, for us here, we wanted to uh, move to a completely different direction. And uh, this was a light red wine, a summery, uh, refreshing red wine to drink in this hot summer of Cyprus. I think, I think it's beautiful, it's, it's, like a, it's like a jewel, like a rhinestone in the glass. And uh, okay, so let's, let's see what uh, aromatics we can get. It's very fruity. It's very, very fruity. I can see uh, that this would be exceptional with uh, Meze. It has this sweet spice, this cinnamon, uh, maybe some sweet chili to it, uh, and then there's like a mocha, chocolate, dark chocolate mm. aroma to it, and then you get like the cherry, strawberry in the. But yeah, in and then in the mouth you can see that it has refreshing acidity uh, and has a good uh, tonic structure to it. So the grape looks black, but the color is pink, <coughs> and then you expect to taste rosé, but actually there is a yeah, strong exactly. so structure underneath. So this is truly. A layered uh, grape. It looks can be deceiving. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, but twice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, after this, uh, we're tasting Q. Uh, that's how we call it here at the winery. It's, uh, it's nickname. It, uh, basically, it was uh, a co-fermentation of uh, Yanuti, Pampacada, and uh, maybe two or three percent Xinisteri. Within this uh, uh, egg barrel, it is in the oak bottle. We're gonna leave it there for pro probably one and a half to two years before actually bottling, aging it, and uh, then releasing it to the market. Okay. So uh, it so is quite reductive at the moment. It needs uh, time to, uh, it needs to breathe. Yes. We did leave it for almost a month with the skins. And that's, that's like uh, red velvet. Mm -hmm. Uh, blood? Yeah, also, yeah. <laughs> that's a very good analogy, actually, yes. That's an amazing color. It's just crimson. That's the word. And also wanted to uh, have to make a wine that is uh, uh, like an icon wine for, the, for this winery and wanted to be Cypriot icon wine. So we wanted to use the Cypriot varieties that we have and experiment with them to see how it is. Of course, this is merely an experiment and we don't even know if it's going to reach the market. So, and this, if it will, it's going to be in at least three years from now. Uh, but yeah, I mean, don't forget that this wine, it needs, it needs its time before it's released to the market. Just trying to imagine what uh, two years in oak are gonna do, I mean. Uh... It is, it's going to change it uh, a lot. Uh, now at this moment you can still get the uh, this, this plum aroma, this uh, uh, characteristic aroma of uh, Yanudi, which is the nutmeg, sweet spice. Mm. There is this black pepper to it also. It's a spicy one. Yeah. I, I like what it's going to be. I can taste the future. Because <laughs> I have superpowers. <laughs> no, I can... Uh, I, I, I think that once this calms down, all this character Will rise up to the surface. I mean, I, I can I can taste it already, but it's just. Uh, uh, I feel like I'm looking at this uh, crazy teenager, but I think at yeah. 25 you're going to be devastating. <laughs> <laughs> so this is truly an experimental wine. So far, I would call this experiment a success. <laughs> Naturally. 
I came back with a bottle of the Mavra varietal called Mouklos. Can you see this white label? This means that this wine is an experiment in progress. You can't get this label anywhere else other than the winery itself. All wineries have experimental wines. Visit your wineries, try their tasting experience and let your feedback shape the future of your local wines. If you have enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment below and don't forget to click on that red button to subscribe. Make sure you call your favorite winery and book a tasting now. Head into the hills this weekend and check out what your local winemakers are creating. You will not be disappointed. And if you are in Cyprus and you're specifically interested in the Chaka's Winery Experimental Wines, I'll leave the details in the description below. Cheers, tasters. I'll see you on the next video.